it was like a storybook. Once you cleared it up, you started to look at things, and then, oh yeah, I wonder who that was. I wonder who that was. And, and then some people, you know, had had some history. When we went into the graveyard, it was uh, sky high with everything, ivy, holly, you know, and the, the whole thing, and these mysterious mounds, which, when we got into it, were gravestones, you know, just covered in ivy. The graveyard looks great. It slopes towards the south, and you can see the Durban Valley and over at uh, Romantic Dunstan. On a nice warm summer's day, it's a great place to be. In fact, anyway, it's, it's an interesting place to be. And all these stories that are graveyards, everyone has a story. The ones I feel for are the thousands of people who have no gravestones. The paupers from the um, from the General Hospital, what was the workhouse and lunatic asylum, uh, were buried there, and there's no marked graves. They're recorded in the grave in the in the burial book. And so wherever you stand, you're probably standing on some. Well, you're certainly standing on someone's grave. We've got something in the order of 12,500 burials um, at Benwell in the churchyard, and, uh, which is quite a number because it's, it's a relatively small block of land. Everybody's sort of mixed in here. Um, there are no separate areas. There are no consecrated and unconsecrated areas. Um, so you, you've got Roman Catholic burials mixed in with Church of England burials. The workhouse burials are, are generally just, um, well, scattered really, just like everybody else. Similarly to the war graves, there isn't a separate block as you have in, in other cemeteries. Um, so it's everybody's sort of, if you like, happily mixed together. It's a churchyard if it was if it was built opened when the church was opened, but it's a graveyard when it's added on. Most of the people in the churchyard are the rich ones. I mean, we know Benwell was uh, was a rich place, the big houses, uh, lots of space. People saw it as an ideal site facing south. The wind, prevailing wind, took the smell of Newcastle away, and um, they, they, they like living here. And there's some notable, very worthy local names: uh, Granger. Richard Granger, uh, John Selby, who's Glass, Selby Glass, and there's Cochrane Carr, Brickworks, Brickmaker. All these people with lots of money and built property, many of the properties have gone the way, but um, these, their gravestones are still there. And it's, uh, again, it's just like a history book. It's really great. Benwell was a country area it didn't have many houses, it didn't have much industry, but so many people came into the area because the, the industry built up. Well, but the church uh, was founded on a piece of land given by John Buddle, who gave one acre of land for the church, the vicarage, and the original churchyard. Um, and they began, uh, I think, in 1832. Uh, to try and build a church and to develop it for the area. I got a great lot of satisfaction in get, getting into Richard Granger's grave. Having a good clean out, you know. Yeah. 
because I mean the big fella sort of uh, he built Newcastle, didn't he? Yeah, it was a, a very sort of humbling experience. You know, I suddenly realised when I got in there, you know, yeah, what he what he actually did for Newcastle. Right? I like to think of, you know, you've got these famous people, but you also have the ordinary people. Now, what is the name of the lady? I've recently completely dug her grave over. Florence Henderson? And I think she had a sweet shop. The person that she was doing it with uh, um, paid out money for the grave to be properly you know, done with the curbs. And um, I've just completely dug that over and improved it. And I'm hoping that it's going to look fantastic in the spring. I've planted a lot of crocus in there. So I'm hoping that uh, it's going to be impressive. But, and I, I just think that with all the different colors of crocus, that might, um, reflect on what was in her shop, cut the colours of sweets. You can imagine seeing su sweet jars on the shelves with the sweets that you used to have when you were young. Um, different colours. I love being outside in the graveyard too, because I, I like plants. I like to make it look nice for the people that are going to come and try and find their relatives' graves. And the worst thing, you wouldn't want to see a grave that was full of weeds, so I like to make it tidy and put some, you know, nice plants in, some bulbs.